Hey guys, uh, this time I played a game that is at the 500 points level, which is unusual because most tournament games of Infinity are 300 points per side. 500 points allows you to take a lot more special weapons, I think it's up to about 10, I think it is, yeah about 10. Uh, and yeah, it's a bit more of an occasion to take those heavy infantry tags, uh, the more expensive options and the more expensive profiles that you would not otherwise already see. Um, note that one area of the game that doesn't scale up is the availability, so if you have 500 points uh, you can still only take two of things that are AVA2. Uh, which makes it kind of interesting. I've decided to run uh, Sun Tse, uh, although I don't normally like him, um, in this particular case because you can afford to have him as well as uh, Shinobu who I'm also running, it means that uh, your opponent can't have reserve troops back and you can have a couple of reserve troopers and you're much more likely to get the first turn. So uh, the synergy there is that Shinobu can sort of come down as your troop, reserve trooper after you've seen where their tags and so forth are. Also running a lot of assault hackers because expecting him to run, you know, uh, Yotam or Seraph or what have you. I've got Maguija there as well. We're playing the scenario uh, that's just recently come out in the new ITS, ITS pack, Capture and Control. You've got to, first of all, connect one of the consoles. After you've connected a console, you can't take the other one, so try and get the one that's easier to uh, capture capture and, uh, and, and make it harder for your opponent and then you can go after their beacon and bring it to your deployment zone. Uh, also running the Yanhuo, uh, I don't really like the Yanhuo, I think the Yanhuo is, is a better model against weaker players who leave things out in the open for you to shoot at. Better players will generally deny you that opportunity and because the Yanhuo is so slow it can't reposition to get a better angle so I really just chucked in there to make up the points in this particular game. Uh, so moving through these photos, uh, again, I'm going first turn, I've got, uh, this is this is vanilla Yuching, not Imperial Service, mind you, I've got the four Quangxi and uh, two Shaolin Monks, uh, and just trying to basically spend a lot of orders on a couple of models in the first turn, which is kind of silly. Yeah, so 500 points, you still only have two control groups, well, I only have two control groups, anyway, I could, could, could have gone for three, but I've decided to turn a lot of the cheer, cheerleader models into more expensive troopers. So here we go here, uh, right hand side on the Pan Oceana uh, flank we've got a Seraph and Shinobu successfully gets her superior infiltrate off, she's the blue Teo camera marker to the left there. Uh, but uh, a further look out on his deployment zone, he's got a Nis uh, HMG in the middle, he's got plenty of troopers strewn around here uh, and uh, lots of little remotes, obviously some things held off the table that will be dropping in later. On the right hand side there's a bullet here as well as a uh, machinist. Uh, generally just a lot of guys getting ready for flank attacks. So moving on to Shinobu first, uh, she puts down a smoke grenade so that the orc spot and team can't sort of see her as she walks across to get around the corner to, to try and destroy the Seraph. Uh, we've also got the Guilang uh, hacker. I forgot that he was a hacker. I actually started uh, moving out with him, then I realized I'd revealed him. Uh, what he's doing here, you can't really see it too well in the background, but he's actually doing a surprise shot against the Nis sniper on that building over there who can actually see Shinobu through that smoke cloud. So I have to use this first with the Guilang just barely getting in range and managing to kill or drop unconscious the, the Nis sniper. So now Shinobu can walk walk around here. Now she doesn't walk, want to walk around and get hit by the flamethrower from the orc spot, so what she does here is she throws a smoke grenade from a line of sight angle that doesn't give a line of sight to the orc spot, but only the smoke grenade next to it, allowing her to come through unopposed. So that's exactly what she does, just carefully spending a lot of orders moving around here, uh, taking out the orc spot and then taking out the, uh, the, the baggage bot as well, or the flash pole spot, shall we say. Note that uh, Sun Tse allows her to use the Lieutenant uh, order even though she's not the Lieutenant because of Advanced Command. And then finally we get into close combat with the Seraph. Now I figured my opponent would try to use a Nan Impulsor here but he decided not to, to use that. He decided just to attack instead. Um, attack attack means that he can get lucky and crit me. Nano Pulsar means that I'm going to have to take an armor save no matter what, or a BTS save, and if I fail to kill him then he saves his Seraph by making that play. I can see where he's coming from though, I mean if if you attack and your opponent Nano Pulses you, you can always pass your own BTS save and then you've got two two rolls from Martial Arts Level 4 to try and eliminate him, so yeah I, I can sort of understand him doing that. Then moving on, the Guilang with uh, salt hacking device just comes prone and comes around the corner here, puts down a repeater, 
and hopefully will uh, yeah he's in suppression fire as well hopefully will be useful later on in the game but more of a zoom out back here uh, Yu Ching Force is just moving up getting to position Rui Shui and Sensorbot with the little dice that says three I mean suppression fire uh, the uh, the Guija just standing next to a building hopefully to provide some arrows now, Panoshan in turn 1, he decides to reveal his cutter from Hidden Deployment. So he's got two tags, one of them's been eliminated already with the monofilament weapon, and now the cutter moving out. And uh, this uh, angle shows you the shootout between the cutter and the Guija. Guija takes a hit, uh, passes the armor save, and shrinks back into cover with the uh, deliberate, uh, intentional fail guts check. Then we've got a Krakot Renegade, who uh, we had to roll 40 guys. He's got Dogged and... Uh, what's it called? Dogged and Total Immunity I think is, is the biochemistry he rolled up. As you can see here, Guija pulls back with the uh, the two inch getting away from the opponent kind of thing. Then, uh, okay, so what does it show here? I believe we're having a look at the side of the table where oh yeah, there's a uh, there's a sensor bot and Shinobu's gone back into Tio Camo. She's the, the, uh, she's the the marker at the bottom right of this picture. So the sensor bot actually reveals her uh, with, a, with a decent roll there. And then uh, on the other side of the battlefield, the other sensor bot moves across here and goes through to take out the other Guilang uh, infiltrator. So he successfully manages to get that done. Here, it is, here he is here, moving first to the console uh, since he didn't manage to discover straight away. Uh, and then, of course, he's able to use sensor. So if we go uh, further into the photos, uh, manages to take out the, the Guilang pictured with a sniper rifle but is actually a combi rifle and uh, drops down a, a repeater just to give me the chance to attack him if he decides to go for the console before shooting the, the repeater but of course he can kill the guilang and then use something else to destroy the repeater and then take the console so really just slowing him down with this placement of the repeater and ARO. Back on the other flank, uh, the sensor bot moves around to shoot at Shinobu, who throws down a smoke grenade. Now, Shinobu needs a 16 or less, and the sensor bot is basically at minus 3 because of Tio Camo. Despite that, though, he gets the roll he needs and kills Shinobu, which was kind of annoying. I felt that with him moving the sensor bot to get the job done here, he really reduced his odds by quite a lot. Um, the, the smoke was actually quite likely to go off. Now, um, having done that, though, uh, he does move himself within 8 inches of the Guilang assault hacker which according to this war machine spray template puts him barely in range so I attempt to shut him down with the assault hacker but failing that one so it didn't quite work out there then the cutter moving forward uh, around the corner here to fire at uh, since say mind you this little red uh, dot this little red bead next to the cutter represents the beacon is our scenario objective. You can also see his HVT just further along the road there. But shooting at Sunsei, I'm pretty confident Sunsei can survive because he's got you know cover, massive armor, total immunity. So he takes a wound or two from the HMG and then just drops prone with the failed with the uh, choosing to fail the guts check. Then we've got the auxilia team who move out and uh, first of all the the pal bot moves up to detonate the mine. So the pal bot, bot is okay. Then the auxiliary here moves around to go after the hacker. So that's what's happening here through these photos, just moving around the corner to get him. The assault hacker, of course, put, uh, puts some immobilization onto the aux bot, which takes him out of suppression fire. But then the auxiliary man moves around the corner and shoots him. So that's what happens there. We have the trauma doc trying to heal the nest sniper, but uh, failing the whip check several times in a row and wasting all the command tokens, which is kind of hilarious, and he still dies. So very unfortunate from our Pano Shiana friend here. Carter moving into the center of the map, um, hoping to go into suppression fire, just trying to dominate the game. And a bit of an overview. So Pano Shiana forces have spread out. They've managed to kill Shinobu. They've wounded, uh, I think, the Guisha and Sunsei killed the. Uh, both of the Guilangs. And now uh, Yu Ching turns, so we've got uh, Quang Shi moving around here against the uh, the sensor bot, which is in suppression fire. Eats a hail of bullets. Elsewhere, uh, unfortunately, we've got the Shaolong Monk trying to put some smoke down. We're getting shot as well. Uh, another Quang Shi moving around. Uh, he's got his cutter in suppression fire, so that's causing a lot of damage too. So now uh, what happens here is the Rui Shui moves out and this is able to shoot at a bit of a longer range to fire back at the auxilia and uh, nails him. 
I think as well as the this the sensor bot in the distance as well. You can't see it too well, but there's a little red dot, which is the poker chip we use to represent the suppression fire. Now, with those uh, those plebs cleared up, the Celestial Guard smoke grenade launcher fires off the smoke grenade onto the console, which I'm going to connect later. Then you've got the Guija moving around to uh, let rip with the machine gun up against these unsuspecting Panoceana fools over here. The sensor bot and uh, a, con a contest mentor regular, that's what's happening here, then moves around further to fire at the NIS HMG, which manages to pass his armor save and shrink back into cover. But now, here's the play that we were, we were waiting to do. So with the uh, HMG having gone dodge prone, the NIS HMG in the building that is, I can now move my own uh, sensor bot over this side here to bring it within range of the cutter. Really important uh, stage in the game because the ninja reveals itself from hidden deployment, has a ninja hacking device, uh, assault hacking device, and it's prone, and it now attempts the total control on the cutter. Now, quite importantly, I had about eight or nine orders. I spent five of them trying to possess him and finally got it. And this is a big difference. If I'd only got one, if I'd, if I'd done it on the first go, then the cutter has about eight orders to use. But given that I had to spend five orders doing that, I've only got maybe three or four. So what happens next is that the cutter, which is possessed, moves over to the enemy side of the table. It's slower because possessed profile is 4-4 speed. It starts shooting at the crackot. But the plan here was to actually grab the, the, the beacon with the enemy cutter and move it to my side of the field. He's slightly too far away with his hacker on the building at this point, and he's got no command tokens. So if I just control the hacker, the the um, the cutter at this point, he won't be able to bring him back unless he moves his hacker close enough. So the hacker, the the, the cutter gr does grab the objective. The crackot who has survived the HMG manages to successfully pass and engage, and we end the turn with uh, the cutter possessed, but the uh, the crackot in base to base. Now I've got to point out that this is a really big mistake by me. What I should have done is I should have moved the cutter just straight towards my deployment zone without getting the beacon and then go for the beacon in my final turn because that would have given him no way to actually uh, recontrol the cutter because he was out of command tokens. Normally you could spend one command token to just get him back. And of course his only hacker was on the other side of the table. So that would have been awesome but I didn't really see that play. I, I messed up really. Uh, and now, further back on my side, I'm just moving back my, my repeater bot um, after connecting the console, just so it's a bit safer. And the Guija, uh, just hanging around the corner, trying again to fire at the Contest Mentor regular, but I think he got a crit dodge or something crazy, so managing to survive. So now what he does, because I've really messed up with the, the Guija, sorry, the, the Cutter, after the, after the Krakot's destroyed by the Cutter, the hacker moves over within range and easily recontrols his cutter with an exorcism. So that's why my, my mistake there is quite severe. Then he moves out with his, his cutter, of course, recontrol back with the original profile and just goes on a killing spree, just wiping out um, as many guys as he can, just heading across the battlefield, just skipping through the photos. There's also a uh, total reaction bot that I've moved up here but doesn't manage to beat the, the cutter, of course, the TO camo, making a big difference in that particular firefight and just keeps coming around slaughtering troops. He's taking out um, a lot of my bots, the Rui Shui, uh, all of the, the Quangshi mostly, really getting into a great state there. Uh, the Guija, of course, can go up against the Nis HMG, which is behind the crate back there, um, but the the Cutter um, comes into play here, uh, managing to destroy the, the Guija in the end, I believe. And then we've got the uh, Contest Mentor regular who's actually a paramedic or some sort of forward observer going forward to uh, steal the console on his side, so connecting that. Uh, I've managed to move out with my my Shaolin. Um, the Guish has been severely wounded by the enemy uh, cutter, but not completely destroyed, so the uh, smoke cloud going down on him now. And another smoke cloud going down on the cutter even, so that's going to allow me to uh, get somebody around to deal with him, I'm, I'm hoping actually turns out to be uh, Sun Tse who goes after the cutter after all of that. Just get forward a couple of photos here. Guija doing its best against the uh, the Nis HMG who was in suppression fire but the Guija manages to, to win that firefight luckily and uh, get him with a shock round. And then moving around to destroy the Accontestment Irregular. And then we have Sun, Sun Tzu going after the, the Guija and getting into close combat with him. 
Final Panoshana turn, there's a, an Akali Seek Commando showing up, but there's not really too much for him to do, so he ends up not really moving out. Uh, we've got the Lieutenant's Order um, used to sort of stand up and fire at the enemy, but really not too much going on there. And the Cutter, of course, since it's his final turn, grabbing the beacon and, and, and running away to safety, so that was the that was the end result of the game. Uh, a big loss to me. And really the, the main reason I lost is because I, I chose to just move in there with the Possessed Cutter when I could have just retreated with him and saved him until that final turn. That would have allowed me to do a lot more and just use a full uh, 10 orders just moving the Cutter out and grabbing the beacon. I think that would have been for the best. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really encourage you to try out uh, larger points uh, games sometimes. Next time if I play 500 points, I think I'll uh, write a bit more of a serious list. Probably use a lot more hackers, even though I had a lot of hackers that game. Probably use the hack towel, probably use more drop troopers and so forth, maybe an Oniwaban, uh, as well as Shinobu, so that'll be kind of cool. Looking forward to it, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one.